there is a really high percentage chance you are absolutely going to hate me for everything I'm about to tell you in this video, but I believe it to be true. Most people will continue to lose in Forex trading and you, my friend, there's a 99% chance in my very humble opinion that you're going to fail in Forex trading or stock trading or crypto trading or trading soybeans or whatever the hell it is you want to trade. You will probably fail. And it's nothing to do with you. Most people really suck at delivering a high level skill set into a market where they can actually monetize it. Trading is no different. Business is no different. Working a high level job as an executive professional at some really extreme tech company as an engineer. This is very difficult stuff to do and trading is zero exception. Think about everyone you know and ask yourself, how many of them do you think could actually operate a business as a high level? How many of them do you think could actually be profitable trading Forex and actually make millions of dollars trading? This all sounds so cliche, but let's look at the facts here. Forex.com says 70% of their clients lose money. Other percent, other statistics say 90% of people lose money. Other statistics still say only 5% of people make money or even only 1% of people make money. Let's go with the worst case scenario here and let's average it out and say you have a 1% chance of being likely to, to, to make money trading Forex long term. This is an abysmally low statistic. You look at the view count of this video right now and you take 1% of that. And that is the amount of people that will be getting profitable trading Forex. And again, this has nothing to do with you personally. I'm not upset at anyone. I'm just saying what the objective stats are and that's just gonna piss a lot of people off because everyone wants to tell everyone that, oh, trading is beautiful. You're gonna make so much money. You're gonna make millions of dollars. Look at all this crazy stuff. Here's a couple Lambos and private jets and mansions and yachts and girls and look at all, look at how crazy life can be with Forex trading, but that is just simply not the reality. Even if you're profitable trading Forex, you're probably not gonna make a shit ton of money. You probably, you might be able to make like millions of dollars, maybe. But most people probably won't even make that much, even if they're profitable. Again, you're probably going to hate me and despise me for everything I'm telling you in this video. But that is the same reason you're not clicking away right now. Because a lot of people are not telling you this on YouTube. A lot of people have a vested interest in telling you that it's going to be a dream and it's going to be great. And it's going to be fine. You got to believe in yourself. I'm just telling you the facts. Now, what I'm, who I'm talking to in this video is the 1% of people who are not going to give up that want to actually examine the reasons why most people lose so they can prevent that from happening to them. So I'm going to get right into it here in this video. By the way, in the pinned comment, I'm putting a link to my free Telegram channel. It has 57,000 members in it right now. In this free Telegram channel, I literally call all my trades and analysis and all my insights and everything. And I've been sharing it for years in here, like six years so far. I just literally share everything for free. You do not have to pay me a penny. If you want to pay me a penny and get personal help, I have a private Discord which you can join. You'll find the link somewhere in the description of this video. But you can join this free Telegram channel right now. By clicking the, the either the first link in the description or the pinned comment i'm literally just going to put it there you can join it immediately you can literally scroll through it right now and see for yourself so go do that and then you can come finish this video now <laughs> let's talk about the first reason people lose money trading here's some of my trades right now the first reason a lot of people lose money trading is they do not keep things simple now we have a couple ways to trade here whenever we look at the way that you can trade like riddle me this for example with this super high production quality little drawing tool here that i'm going to use People, price goes up and price goes down and price goes up and price goes down. And people, humans, have this really, really arbitrary, stupid thing where they look and they try to find patterns in seemingly random data. If you, <laughs> A good way to prove that this is actually true is for you to grab the long short position tool and literally go through the trading view replay mode and just randomly enter buys and sells you know, with the long short position tool. With a one to one risk reward ratio, risking the same amount for every single trade, you will probably end up around break even. You will win half the time and lose half the time. Trading is 50-50. The only thing that makes human traders profitable outside of algorithms is the fact that we have this thing called intuition and discretion and price action discernment and all these little like micro things that you learn over the time, all these nuances and subtleties that help make you profitable long term. Most people never develop that because things are so damn complicated they will look for price to go up to the distribution zone with the liquidity gap and then the, the price upwards thrust after distribution followed by a fair value gap accumulation with the institutional order block wagyu beef bearish candlestick back to the future back in time strategy to then buy at, at the distribution block with a 1 to 69 risk to reward ratio and make $420,000 per trade. Most people are just doing all sorts of crazy shit. And this is one of the reasons why most people don't get profitable, which is why it's the first thing that I'm telling you here in this video. Most people will continue to lose because they are not keeping things simple. I want you to listen to that one more time. I think most people lose because they are not keeping things simple. Guess what you can do instead? 
and I'm not speaking out my ass here. I'm, I'm showing you literally, these are live trades that I'm in right now, like on, on my account. This is literally my account right here. So why did I take this trade? Here, it's very, very complicated. You got to really pay attention to this. You know, you really, this is going to take me about 45 minutes to explain this one trade. You ready? All right. Price is in an uptrend and it had pulled back and I bought. I bought during an uptrend. This is literally the entire analysis. Price is in an uptrend and it pulled back and I bought and I put this stop loss down here and then I put the profit target up here at a higher high because what happens in uptrends, right? If it continues, price just goes and makes a higher high. <laughs> That's the whole analysis. Slow clap. It can literally be that simple. Now, why do I do this? Because I accept price is just going to go up half the time and down half the time. No matter all of the crazy mental gymnastics and hoops that you can jump through to try to justify why you think a trade is going to go up or down, it doesn't change the facts. Price is going to go up half the time and down half the time. So how do you make money? You make money by making a little bit more in your winners versus what you lose in your losers. Starting with just a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio and letting things play out, you already start with a break-even trading approach. Let me say that again because it's very important. By literally ignoring all technical and fundamental analysis and going to a chart and just entering randomly, you flip a coin and say, I'm going to enter a buy <laughs> and I'm going to put a 20 pip stop and a 20 pip target and I'm going to risk $100. If you do that about 100 times, maybe like 20, 50 times, but let's say you round it up to like 100 times, you're going to win roughly half the trades and lose half the trades and pre-commission, pre-swap fees, you are going to roughly be break even. This is a hell of a lot better than the 90% of people on average, whatever metrics you want to look at. Most people lose money. This is a heck of a lot better than that. And you get to start with that by keeping things simple and using literally just a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. Despite what everyone will tell you, good, you need good risk reward. You need a high win rate. You need all this, all this trash. I, I don't, I don't care. I've been doing, this has been working in practice for me for the past six years. I'm uniquely qualified to give you my opinion because not only does it work for me, but I've actually literally just called everything live in my telegram channel for six years. And you right now can start scrolling through it by hitting that first, whatever the, the pin comment is. And I trade crypto too. And it's crazy. And there's all sorts of stuff. And I'm one of the few people that are able to do this and document it all live. So that being said, if you're not keeping things simple, I think you're shooting yourself in both feet and then you're just really just shooting yourself everywhere because eventually you're going to bleed to death and then not be able to trade because you're dead. Because trading made you lose all of your hair and you went bald at a very young age because you pulled it all out because trading was so stressful because you weren't keeping things simple. So <laughs> that's the first thing. Keep things simple. The second thing is risk management. People do not define what the risk is for each trade. Now, risk management doesn't have to just simply be, let me risk $100 per trade. Risk management can be a dynamic thing. I know people and I have personally traded systems that use hedging as a risk structure, that use dollar cost averaging as a risk structure, that literally use a form of martingale and position multipliers as a risk structure, meaning like adding to losing trades and like slightly higher position sizing increments. I have people like myself who, tr who risk a set dollar amount per trade. Some trades 1,000, some trades 3,000, some trades 5,000, some trades 10,000, just kind of depends on the context. By defining what the risk is per trade, you are already committing to what the max loss is likely going to be. Sometimes price spikes really quick in one direction, slippage happens, but it's a very small percentage of the time. Most of the time, 99% of the time or more, you can define exactly how much you're risking per trade, and then you let the stats play out. <laughs> now, doing this, keeping things simple first, allows you to get into trades. Controlling risk means you're not going to get yourself into trades that make you lose all of your trading capital. Another form of risk management that's dynamic is if you have like, say, 10,000 to trade, but you only put 1,000 into account, you may be risking really high amounts on that account, 10 to 20% risk per trade, right? You risk 20% per trade on that account, you lose five trades in a row, you blow the account. Okay, cool, but that's only 10% of your trading capital, you got another nine grand to trade with. So it's really not a big deal. I've done this forever, I've done this for a very long time. I only put a portion of my capital into an account, and I allocate my whole trading capital to some in long-term equities like, like index funds, some of them in crypto, and then some of it allocated to Forex trading. And then even in Forex trading, I keep only a small amount of my capital in each account. And I do this to control risk. It's as a risk structure. You don't want one trade to completely murder all of your trading capital. So find a way to control risk. And guess what? You get to do what's, what matters to you the most. That now, how does it how do you actually go about controlling risk? It all depends on your risk tolerance. Sometimes you have a high risk tolerance. You're like, I'm going to risk literally all the money I have to trade with 
because it's a small amount of money and it's not that big of a deal to me if I lose it all because it's a small amount of money to begin with. And even if it is a large amount of money, if you're comfortable losing it all and that's just your risk tolerance, you're like, look, I'm cool with risking all of this capital to try to grow it. I accept that risk. If that if that's you, perfectly fine. Maybe you're medium risk. You're like, oh, I want to risk, you know, a good chunk where it would hurt if I lost. But I want to make it to the point where like if I win, the payoff will be worth it to me and risking, you know, a quarter of a percent per trade. Just, you know, if I have 10K, a quarter of a percent per trade, you do the math, you're risking microscopic amounts. And <laughs> some people are just like, that's not exciting. That doesn't even motivate me or incentivize me to want to trade. I get it. You get to define what your risk management structure is. All I'm saying is just have one, like define it out. It can be high risk, it can be low risk, it can be medium risk, whatever the hell people mean by all these like medium, low, and high risk and all this shit. Just make sure you define a risk management structure. So we've talked about keeping things simple and controlling risk. And the next thing is you want your average wins to be bigger than your average losses. Now, how do you go about actually doing this? <laughs> Especially if you start with the one-to-one -one scenario I was telling you earlier. So you're going to buy in a trade. <laughs> we're, we're looking at this right here, right? This is about a one-to-one -one risk reward situation. It's actually one to 1.2. I am a god. I am a crazy risk reward trader. Look at one to 1.2, right? So it's about a one to one scenario, right? Here's how you make a little bit more when you're right versus what you lose when you're wrong. If price starts going into profit, I just hold it to the final target. That's what I try to do in general. Now there's context and nuance here. However, if you get into a one to one risk reward ratio trade, it allows you to monitor the price action and close the trade when it no longer makes sense. <laughs> for example, if, if this trade, say we're up here right now, then we come back and then we start making lower highs and then we start doing some stuff like this and then we start looking like we're going to go down because price is making like lower highs and it failed to make a higher high and price is just ranging and it just doesn't look like it's going to go up anymore, right? All these reasons come together and I just think, you know what? I no longer think this is going to go up. I, in fact, think it's going to go down. Well, guess what? If it's at that point in time, whenever this happens and all this develops over the course of like a day or two, and then you realize like, okay, I don't think it's going to go up anymore. You could just close the trade right there. So now, instead of you taking like, in this case, a thousand dollar loss, now you only lose like a hundred, 200 bucks. You've kept your average loss smaller than your average win. And again, you can do this with a one to one risk reward ratio. It's almost impossible to do it with like a one to three, one to five, one to 50 risk to reward ratio like all these idiots is trading this smart money institutional concept ict shit like that i see everywhere it's so stupid it's so freaking annoying well, not to me personally i guess because i don't do it but it's so hilarious to watch people run around with all these mental gymnastics to think like oh i'm gonna trade with a 1 to 20 risk to reward ratio and then i'm gonna close it early before it gets to the stop now you can do the same thing <laughs> with this by just saying like, well, I'm just going to put the stop right there and then the target up. And if it hits the stop, I'll just let it hit the stop. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. However, it gives you no way to manage it. By starting with the one-to-one, -one, remember the benefit of this is that you already have a 50% chance of hitting the target and a 50% chance of hitting the stop. The beautiful thing on top of this is that this allows you to develop the experience, the intuition, the discretion, that subjective opinionated judgment that you have about what you think is likely to happen that you cannot explain or articulate or communicate in words. It's that feeling you get where you're looking at a chart and, you're, and your brain and your eyes, your body has seen that and felt that like a hundred times for like all the trades that you've taken. And then you, and then it tells you like, hey, Marcus, random name, I think price is actually going to go down now. Probably better to close the trade. And then you don't know why somebody asked you like, hey, Marcus, why'd you close the trade, bro? It's still technically in an uptrend. And then you, you being somebody randomly named Marcus, if you're Mar someone named Marcus watching this video, welcome to Mission FX. I've correctly guessed your name. Gold star for you. You tell yourself, you're like, I don't know how to explain it. I just get a bad feeling about this trade. And so I'm just going to close it here. That there's nothing wrong with doing that. Trading as arbitrary and subjective as it is, it blows my mind to see people trying to make it so black and white and mechanical. Because the moment you try to over mechanize the system and put way too many absolute rules and criteria and confirmations and all this bullshit, you're doing all of this stuff and you're still going to be right half the time and wrong half the time. What is the point? As subjective as trading is, as much as it is an art more so than it is a science, better to use the intuition that you develop as a result of the experience. The best decisions in life are oftentimes made with a gut and grit and intuition and feel and taste and kind of looking at things and letting your body decide what to do. It's like an instinctive reaction. Let yourself develop that through trading by just starting with a one-to-one one, one one risk reward ratio 
letting things play out for like a month, tracking like 20, 50, 100 trades. Then after a while, you just kind of start to develop like, you know what? I don't think this is going to work out. <laughs> I'm going to close here in profit. I'm going to close here around break even. I'm going to close here at a small loss. So now you're keeping your losses small. But whenever you have a trade work and it goes all the way to your target, you are doing exactly what I said, which is with the third thing, which is you need to make more on your winners than you lose in your losers. If you do that with just a 50% win rate, you are profitable, my friend. Let me say this again, because this is not a statement that is opinion. This is an objective fact. If you have a 50% win rate, meaning you win half the trades and lose half the trades, but when you win, you make more in terms of money than what you lose in terms of money on your losing trades. You're profitable. It seems kind of almost common sense, right? But common sense is not common practice. When you make more on your winners, what you lose on your losers, even if you only win half the time, you are making money long term, given enough trades. Now, you take one or two trades, this is all skewed. But if you take like 100 trades, you can't predict the outcome of the next trade, but you can predict the, the likely outcome after 100 trades. That outcome is profitable if you have a 50% win rate and simply make more on winners versus what you lose on your losers. Now, the last thing that I've seen is the worst part. <laughs> this is the part that screwed me over for years, for about two years actually, until I finally developed it. And it is that most traders do not actually take the time to develop intuition. Now, intuition again is that feeling you get where you feel like you think you know what's about to happen or you feel like you know what the best decision would be. Like, it's time to add to this trade because I think it's going to go up and I want to make more money on it and I feel like it's going to go up. So I'm going to add more. Or moving the stop loss to break even, right? Or, or like price goes into a loss and it comes back to retest. So you close at break even thinking it's going to go down. Or you close in a small loss. Or, or it goes up almost to your target but starts reversing. So then you just close early because you think it's going to pull back. There is no exact black and white way <laughs> to dictate how you should do this every single time. It's, it's just there's no black and white mechanical way to do it because if there was, it would be coded into an algorithm with black and white rules and you would literally have an expert advisor like an EA or algorithm or automated trading software that could do it and execute it with stop losses. The best performing automated systems, which there is more, more than 50% of the FX market is traded with literally just algorithms. I think some stats show it's as high as 70, 80, 90%. In algorithms, the ones that work the best are essentially kind of a grid trading approach or semi-martingale approach using maybe hedging as well. Price breaks past an area. It hedges it. It adds to the losing trades. Then they just bet on the stats that it's going to come back and they do it with really low risk so that the, the EA can handle like drawdowns long term. They, they suck at predicting where price is going to go because there's so many variables that cannot be accounted for in, in that actual algorithm. So whenever you're learning trading, your brain can account for those thousands of little variables. However, you may not know exactly what they are. You may not be able to list them in a black and white absolute way. You may not even be able to describe, articulate, or communicate what they are. But your brain recognizes it. Your body feels it. Your mind tells you. It literally says, like, hey, like, this doesn't look like it's going to work out. And then you may try to find reasons and rationalize it and say, like, why you think it's not going to work out. But it doesn't matter. Because the fact is, is you're getting that feeling for a reason, given enough data and experience, you're getting that feeling for a reason that allows you to be able to like <laughs> manage a trade or do what you think is best in the moment. A lot of people completely ignore this feeling of intuition and it baffles me. But then again, it's hard to blame them because I did the same thing for two years. I understand you. You want a trading approach that is black and white, that is works almost autonomously, very simple. The setup's either there or it's not. You have all your rules in place and it gives you a sense of security because you're fearful about actually using your brain and accepting that things are random and dynamic and they can change at any time and it's very subjective to begin with and you're afraid at your ability to be able to duplicate that long term. I totally get it. It would be super, super simple to just be able to use a set of black and white rules. But again, Go out and find an algorithm that actually uses stop losses and profit targets that has more than a 50% win rate and also a risk reward of one to one or greater that is actually profitable. Automated systems can't even do that. There is literally almost zero edge in automated systems outside of the risk structure, like dollar cost averaging in, grid trading, thing, things like that. But when it comes to you personally, you can develop that discretion because it's not a quantifiable thing. It's a qualitative data that your body and mind has experienced through all the trades that you've taken. But again, most people don't do this and most people are losing. They will literally abandon their gut and their feelings and their intuition and they will just literally toss it to the side and stab it with a spear and kill it to instead say nope price is pulled back to the 61 8 fibonacci i will now buy and then you, you but your brain is looking at it and it's like 
this doesn't look like an uptrend. This does. This looks more like a range. In fact, it even is making lower highs and it looks like a downtrend. But the, but the strategy said the buy because it pulled back to the 61.8 Fibonacci. And I watched ICT's latest video on a fair value distribution gap things and the Wagyu beef bullish candlestick uh, closure confirmation. <laughs> you know, all of this crap. And you're like, so all that says I should sell. But then this says I should buy. But then I, some guy over here said that he doesn't know what's going to happen. So he's going to enter a buy and a sell because he just thinks that, you know, I don't really know what's going to happen. So, you know, just buy and sell. And there's all this confusing stuff. None of that matters. Whenever your intuition does not align with what the actual like, you know, black and white analysis is, right? It, everything gets screwed up and then you're like torn between should I take it or should I not? And then you take it and it wins, but you didn't even feel good about it because you weren't really sure. And then if it loses, you start playing these mental gymnastics with yourself saying like, oh, I lost it because X, Y, Z. And then you just go to this endless rabbit hole of effery where most people go, 99% of people in my opinion, and they continue to lose. And that last reason was because they haven't developed that intuition. Allow yourself to develop the intuition to literally be able to look at a chart and let your feelings and emotions tell you what the best decision is. People say you shouldn't be emotional in trading. You should eliminate your emotions. And to a degree, yes, that's true. You shouldn't like get hung up on if you have a losing trade. And you also shouldn't get too excited or happy when you have a winning trade. It's just statistics. You don't know the outcome of the next trade. So that's to be said for emotions. However, when I'm talking about intuition, that is in fact a feeling or an emotion. It is a feeling inside of you that is justified with data and experience that you've accumulated throughout the course of your trading career over the course of weeks, months, and even years that allows you to make better contextually appropriate decisions in your actual trading. Do not abandon that. Let's go back over these rules. The first one is keep things simple. The second thing is control risk. The third thing is that you need to make more on winners than you lose on your losers. And the last and final thing is do not abandon your intuition. Build your intuition through experience. And if you do these things, I cannot guarantee you anything. You're probably still going to lose money even after watching this video just because trading is really effing hard. But I think that if you focus on these things, it gives you a better chance personally of becoming profitable. And if you're somebody that's still here at the end of this video, cheers for you because you're doing something that most people will not do. You're taking the time to learn and you're taking the time to become better and you're taking the time to build your experience. Gold sticker for you. If you liked this video, then be sure to do whatever the hell you want. I'll see you in the next one.